I'm feeling my own. I'm feeling my own. So, makeover, makeover. makeover. Look at that. You're on Janet's planet now. Cock -cock -cock -cock. Makeover, <laughs> makeover. Whoa. Whoa. Damn it, Janet. I love you. Hey everyone, it's Eliza. And Sam here to recap episode 10 of season 12 of RuPaul's Drag Race. Remember, there will be spoilers as we break down Friday night's episode. And remember to stick around with us till the end where we'll be breaking down our scorecard for the season. So this week's challenge is the super fan makeover. We love a makeover challenge. I'm a little jealous that the super fans get to be made over. Are you are you feeling a little jelly too, Sam? We all wanted to be these super fans <laughs> coming in. And our guest judge for this episode is Daisy Ridley, Ray from Star Wars. She was our token straight girl on the panel and we loved it. Yes. Queen work. <laughs> Miss Rue comes out. Oh my god, I love this look, the glitter and the chains. Urgh. Huge fan. And the twist for the super fans, as we find out, is that they also have to lip sync. I say have to, but really I mean get to, because that's awesome. <laughs> they get to live the full fantasy, do a lip sync for your life. Let's jump right into it. So, Rue comes into the workroom, very, very quiet, because the super fans that are getting made over don't know it at this point. That's the first twist here. You're going to be making over some beautiful women. <gasps> I was wondering when all the super fans came in, did they really sign up for this? You're going to receive head to toe drag makeover. Oh <laughs> you know, imagine thinking you were gonna watch Drag Race and then it's like, no, you are gonna be watched by everyone who watches Drag Race. Exactly. Don't f it up. And Jada won last week's challenge. So for that win, she gets the privilege of getting to choose first and getting to pair up the other queens. And it looks like she did a great job with it. Everybody seems to be getting along really well. She just wants to see everyone succeed. Wants to see all these super fans have a good time. Yeah, let's go through them one by one. To start, we have Heidi Aphrodite. This could be my favorite Heidi name yet. It's perfect. Aphrodite with an F. With an F, yes, absolutely. Aphrodite. And Heidi was paired up with Nicole, also known as Honey Almighty. Ooh. And this was such a cute pairing. They were super cute together. They had a really good energy. Nicole was really sweet and she talked about how she was bullied when she was younger. People suck. So, oh, trust yeah. they do. People suck in, in this day and age. Everybody has a phone and everybody can take a picture of something, yeah. make a meme or something. Heidi was able to instill her own confidence in Honey Almighty. Nicole slash Honey had one of the quotes of the night. She said, My husband and I, we coined Drag Brings Joy. Drag Brings Joy. So simple, but so true. Drag brings joy. They were great, great chemistry. Unfortunately, on the runway, as we saw, Heidi looked fantastic, Honey looked fantastic. They did not look like they were part of the same drag family, however. It was such a jarring visual disconnect I found between like head to toe sequins and jewels and hardly any jewels. Heidi was most worried about getting clocked for makeup this week. And it seemed like she put all of her effort into doing Honey's face really, really well, but then kind of fell short on the outfit construction. Honey was great, but her outfit needed some zhuzh. The two outfits just didn't seem to match each other. And Heidi was hilarious at the end. They grew up so fast. Yeah, Heidi came to the runway with a story, like she always does. Shall we go to Jackie? Jackie, oh my gosh. Tiffany as Lil Snacky. So now you're Jackie Cox. Have you guys come up with a name? Yes. What is your drag Lil name? Lil Snacky Cox. <laughs> <laughs> Her dynamic with Lil Snacky was so adorable, so cute and highlighted for me that it's not just a makeover challenge, but it's also a mothering challenge. And that seemed to be where Jackie was taking the lead right away, just being the best mama she could be, because we know that is Jackie through and through. I am giving out Jackie points because my little daughter is slaying. On the runway, I thought they were very cute together. They had the red and black 70s disco look, very solid. I feel like Jackie always does a great job and she brings it to us every ball. They liked it, but it seemed like the judges wanted just a smidge more out of it. I think they're just looking for something edgy from Jackie. We're top six now. What's gonna put you in the top four? Tonight, I don't think put her in the top four, but it was a solid concept, really good resemblance. They went for the family resemblance and that's really what the crux of this challenge is, as we know. Yeah, if you don't have that, you don't have much of anything. Jada Essence Hall and Jazz Essence Hall, also known as 
Bethany. Jada got to pick her makeover and we weren't sure how it was gonna work out the whole time. I was like, she just seems a little more reserved, but I bet you there's a wild side in there somewhere that needs to be released. Jada started to find out that she wasn't quite up to the Essence Hall standard, but Jada did really well at the makeover aspect. She also did really, really well at the mothering aspect. We know no one is as good at giving tough love as Jada. I think that's exactly what she did this week. I ain't gonna never drag my daughter through the mud unless we lose. <laughs> In short, perfect Jada Essence Hall family resemblance. They looked absolutely great together. The outfits were on point. The makeup was on point. But my favorite part of the runway presentation was how Jada worked in the whole story of her being a drag mother. You know, there was kind of the tighten up, walk straight. And I think that was really, really clever because if they had clocked her drag daughter for not having the same sort of walk as her, it's already built into the story. That just shows through and through exactly how Jada knows how to turn everything into an advantage. And they also had a really sweet emotional connection. You know, we're not used to seeing Jada get a little teary-eyed and get emotional. It seems like Jada and Bethany definitely had something there, which was really nice. So next we have Crystal Method and Grace, AKA Opal Method. This was a great pairing, I loved it. Right away you can see their energies matched. Definitely, they had great energy together. It was really cute. Grace was super excited. Yeah, super excited, but also super anxious. And so this one was one that really looked for me like it could go either way. Opal had a bit of stage fright and was really overwhelmed at the idea, but Crystal was coaching her through it really well, really receptive. She's just so excited to be here. It kind of reminded me that I'm really excited to be here too, and I'm really excited to kill it in this challenge. It's our dreams come true. On the runway, we got one of the wackest looks. I personally loved it. I have a question, and I think I speak for a lot of people. What in the f am I looking at? <laughs> <laughs> For me personally, this was not my favorite look of the night, but I do understand and appreciate that, like Crystal said, this is me. It had a fun, zany energy that was very, very Crystal. <laughs> I was definitely one of the people who was nervous when I saw the yellow going on. Then once you see the bird and Ernie look, you understand. It's such a bold choice. I think it also contributed to letting Opal lose herself in the drag experience. Opal just fully embraced it, went for it, and just felt her fantasy. And then we get to one of the fan favorites so far, oh, definitely, Janet the Planet. Janet the Planet! Who was Teramisu with Sherry Pie, but I think we'll all forever know her as Janet the Planet. And um, you were legally Janet the Planet. I am legally Janet the Planet. I changed my name more than 20 years ago. It was really to remind myself to not take myself too seriously. She was working that Amazonian fierceness. Tall ladies wear heels. Listen, don't let anybody tell you what to do. I think I wanted to curl and hide, but I have a dad who's really tall. He's like 6'6", six, six, and he would say, tall is beautiful, tall is beautiful, stand up. Janet was great. When she first came out, she was like unrecognizable. For a split second, I actually wasn't even sure who was Janet, who was the contestant. Yeah, there was a great family resemblance there. They had the same face, the same look, same mannerisms. She was giving me Robbie Turner vibes. Did yeah. anyone else see that? Gorgeous, old timey, dramatic queen. And I was living for it. Janet the Planet is gonna live on in her story. Gigi Good and BB Bad, also known as Shay, but not Shay kool -Aid. It was opulence. And yet at the same time, it was still a fun and a silly performance. And they had this opposite thing going on in black and white. The judges did say that it was great, but maybe it was a little bit too simple in their estimation. This is uh, Gigi Good brings it to us every ball. Gigi was good in this challenge. She always is. She always brings something that's fashion. It was a little plain to me. If I could borrow a phrase from Daisy Ridley, I would say it was a touch lackluster. I think at this point, Gigi is a victim of her own expectations. She came out of the gate really hot, won a bunch of challenges. And now when she doesn't bring out something that's gag worthy or wows us, it just kind of feels like it's not enough. Again, I think Rue keeps finding reasons to keep Gigi out of the bottom too. What were your thoughts on the super fan lip sync? Oh my gosh, incredible. We got to see some fun moves. We got to see Opal having a great time dancing, getting into it. Little Snacky was so good. She was totally a little snack. She was doing like splits in the middle of her lip sync. I was like, oh my God, what is happening here? And she's looking at the judges the whole time like, yeah, I see you seeing me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got to see Honey Almighty feeling her oats up on that stage. And Miss BB Bad in the lip sync, giving us a death drop at the end. Oh yeah, that was insane. <laughs> I was wondering if that lip sync was gonna reflect on the contestants at all. It didn't seem to. It was just kind of a fun little contest. They all just had such a great time. This brings us to the tops and the bottoms of the week. 
The winner of this challenge was Jada Essence Hall. She did a wonderful job. I don't think anyone was surprised there. I was a little surprised when Jada won. I thought Crystal could have pulled it out this week, but I think what pushed Jada over the edge is that she paired up everyone so well. And then unfortunately the bottom two who had to lip sync were Jackie and Heidi. Well, it made a battle of the disco queens. I loved it. They each had their own take. They both had a lot of energy. Jackie came out with her campy style again right away. She had her whole insane eyes story. I loved it. I don't know if everyone did, but I thought that was kind of the way to go about this lip sync. She really had a take on it. I also love Jackie. She came out, she was ready. She looked so confident. You could see it in her eyes. She was like, I have a plan for this song. I think it made perfect sense. I thought it was hilarious. Heidi definitely was giving it everything and she went full energy. In this particular challenge, Jackie, for me, had a stronger lip sync and Jackie had a family resemblance. So I was pretty shocked when they first announced that Heidi was safe because I thought, how can Jackie go home? I was gagged when Rue said Heidi, Shantae, but as we saw, she kept both of them. You've taken us on a magic Merkin ride. <laughs> and it's not over yet. I think well-deserved, this top six is still a top six, but a top four is kind of emerging. That brings us to our leaderboard. Whoop, whoop, whoop. So, winner of this week's challenge is Jada. That gives her two more points to put her at eight points total. Right behind her is Gigi with six. Behind them is Crystal with two points. Behind them is Jackie with negative one and Heidi with negative two. Now we're gonna cut to the last three weeks in our power ranking chart. The number one spot is still occupied by Jada Essence Hall. She has five points in the last three weeks with two wins. Crystal consistently being in the top puts her at three points in the last three weeks. Really strong performance and trajectory for her. Heidi's been up and down in the last few weeks, but is at one point. Gigi is at negative two in the last three weeks and two lip syncs in the past three weeks puts Jackie at the bottom with negative three points. All right, so that is it for us. Let us know what you thought of episode 10 in the comments. And as always, you can follow us on Instagram at Miss Watch Mojo. You can follow me on Instagram at The Beat Easy or on Twitter at Beat Easy. We will see you again next Sunday right here on Miss Mojo. Bye. Bye.